It's no longer news that football is a major force and a unifying factor in Nigeria, as many talented players who started their career in Nigeria have traveled to Europe and other parts of the world. I'm here with the President Diamond Football Academy, Martin Augo, as he tells us more about some players that moved to Europe through his academy. He also spoke about the Super Eagles playoff game against the Black Stars of Ghana and women football in Nigeria. I want you to talk about uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria. We have two uh, qualifiers, playoff last for the, uh, to qualify for Qatar 2022. Now they are going to play in Ghana first on the 25th of March and then they come back to play in Nigeria. And these two matches are very vital for the Super Eagles of Nigeria to qualify. What would be your advice for the coach? Because it's, a, it's almost like a do or die thing. Because if you don't, if you don't win, then they are out. Absolutely. They are my first the coaches to make sure he picks the best. Should not be influenced by anybody. Should not allow himself to be influenced. If he knows the best, use the best. Because when we lose, the blame is going to be on him. That's true. I'm telling him. I'm telling him now. Maybe this you, you get to see this. Time. Absolutely. I'm telling him. Make sure you use the best. Don't be. Uh, don't allow yourself to be used by anybody. Don't allow anybody to influence you. Make your selection based on merit, based on fitness, based on technical ability and tactical uh, ability. Don't say, okay, because I know this person, oh, he put it. No, or because this person brought this person. No, mm. no, 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 no. Okay. Because Nigerians are going to descend on him. That's true. Once we lose. That's true. But I'm praying that we will not lose. By God's grace, we will win. But the coach, the, the coaches have to do the right thing. That's true. If they don't do the right thing, what happened to us in Nations Cup will happen again. Hmm. But do you think of what happened in the Nations Cup was really the fault of the coach? For instance, the coaching crew. There was no need bringing in, uh, bringing in the guy that that they gave red card. Um, yeah, um, it will be. There was no point bringing him in because he didn't play anything when he came in. Wow. He did not play wow. anything when he came in. But don't you think also that the coach did because he had just three weeks with the boys before the nation spoke, and he did his best. <laughs> this was a, this was a, an already made team for him. He didn't, there, there, there was no work for him to do, only to make the selection. Because Gerald Roa did the job, he made the team. So the coach just, the, the mistake he made, I think he made, was bringing in that. Uh, it will be. It will be. He, okay. He, he, he wouldn't have brought it. He destabilized the team entirely after of that. Of course, that red card, despite everything that's for us, true, that's that true. red card demoralized, destabilized everything for us. In, in, in such a, a match, you get a red card, <laughs> yeah, the team is finished. And Nigeria, you know, we, we play on that tension we, because we know what is going to happen at home when we lose. Yeah, so that's everybody true. was playing. But when he brought in, there was one striker he brought in. Oh my God. If we had such a striker, why, why put him on the bench? What, what, what was it? Uh, Seidu? One tall guy. Yeah, yeah Seidu. Seidu. Yes. Seidu. I think he scored a goal. He scored a goal in uh, yeah. no, not that last game. The, the last game. Okay, okay. He scored a goal. I, I didn't watch he scored the last game. Yeah. The guy is good. He, he can see he was piling pressure. That's true. Was piling, that guy, he, he shouldn't have been on the bench. He should have started the game because that game was so important. We needed to start from minute one to pile pressure on That's Tisha. true. That's true. But you know, they brought him late, so there was more. Even with the little time the guy came in, he saw what, what he did. Absolutely. Everything changed. Yeah, there was a yeah, change. You know, there was a change. Even though the referee was not, you know, too was not too, too friendly for friendly, with yes, Nigeria. Yes, with, with us, but you know, this time around, please, they should not put the boy on, on the bench. They should put they should start, they should start him. him. They should be starting him. That guy had a fighting spirit. It's so, true. But I think the coach was thinking I, because he was new in the team, the confidence was because I also remember I spoke to him. Uh, one of their matches that they finished playing, he said one of the things that has worked against him is that he's not as in he's not too. I, I, I think he's confident. He was not very confident so if, with the national team the first time. Then why him? Well, 
Il a appelé Europe, 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 il a Europe, il a appelé 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 Europe, You know, playing in the Nations Cup is nothing, it's the same thing, it's the same. There's no special thing, but it's just that, that red card. It destabilized Oh my God. It did. Oh my God, that red it card. Did. That red card. But I think the coach was thinking, I, because he was new in the team, the confidence was, because I also remember I spoke to him, uh, one of the matches that they finished playing, he said one of the things that has worked against him is that he is not, as in, he's not too, I, I think he's confident. He was not very confident okay. with the national team if the first time. Confident, why am I well, they don't tell me that you are playing Europe but you are not confident. Are you? What's wrong with you? You are playing in Europe and you are not confident. What do you mean? You play before 30,000, 30,000 expected goals. Like you say, you are not confident. What is there? Psychologically, you are balanced because you are playing every day, day in the out in front of you know, a huge crowd, a huge crowd. So you know, playing. It's not the same thing, the same. That's no special thing. But just that, that red card. It destabilized. Oh my god. It did. Oh my god. That red it card. Did. That red card. Because there was no need for it to be to do what it did. There was no point. Why are you? Why did you? But what when you know that we needed to qualify? And they have been doing well. You know, from yeah, the from the first round. Manager, they've been doing very well. Yeah, they did. Oh god. Uh, that it was, it was a very. I couldn't sleep. All right, your final word to young players coming up from Nigeria. Young players yes. that are still looking forward to be there tomorrow. Discipline. Discipline. Our players not discipline. In fact, the supervisors will also say discipline. Okay. If they can respect the, coach, the coaches, respect the coaches, respect the coaches, then we go, we go along the way. You know, in Europe, See, see, you know, no matter who you are, if you like being Ronaldo, you're under the coach. Yeah. That's why you see Mourinho, he doesn't take, mm -hmm. if you don't want to go under him, then you see, he will send you back it. Absolutely. Once the coach loses the respect, once the coach can, is not in control of his team, yeah. then the team is finished. That's so true. I'm also even telling the coach of Spike with uh, 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 our own uh, 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 please. He should do all his best to make sure that he is in charge yes. of the team. It's, if any player that messes around should send the player home, no yes. matter who he is. That's true. That's the only way you will get results. That's true. You know, because our people they respect white white men. Yeah, they do. more than they respect the Nigerian coaches. That's true. Which is wrong. They respect if it's uh, German person, English person, uh, they, are, they respect when they say, but, but the Nigerian man, they feel maybe they have money more than the more than the coach, which is nonsense. That's true. You know, so our, our young players discipline, discipline. This, some of them, they have started, you know, platinum, uh, yeah. platinum, their hair, and they wear earrings. In our academy, you can't do that. If you do that, we send you home. Good. No bango, no chain, no. Your hair should be, should be like my own. Good. Yes, discipline, serious discipline. No, no, no time to joke. That's the only way you can get to the top. Without discipline, forget about it. Thank, Thank you very Bye. much. All right, I've heard a little about uh, you, but I know there's so much you have done. Let's start with uh, your transfer with uh, Chukweze. Can you tell me a little about how it all started and ended? Team to Portugal. Okay. After Portugal, when we came back, we took him to number 17, coached by Coach Garuba, Manu Garuba, assisted by Nico Bade. They were in Calaba then, in their camp. But they didn't make it that year. For the year, which Amunike was giving uh, the mandate. Yeah, the, uh, the mandate. The coach number 17. So he called it. And uh, in that process, Chukweze was dropped by Amunike. 
mm. because of injury. Okay. Because of his leg. And, um, I had to plead and beg. Treated the boy, mentally treated him. For a long time, for maybe for two, three weeks, one month. Okay. Uh, before the court said we should do MRI okay. for him on his leg. So we brought back the result and it was confirmed that he played. Okay. That was how he went back. Otherwise, he wouldn't have come back. Wow. He, he, yes, I put in a lot of effort to make sure that he, he went back to the team. Okay. So then from there, he played. Got the bronze boot in the World Cup on the second team. Mm -hmm. then, we, then transferred him. First of all, we went to. I took him to uh, FC Porto. Yeah. FC Porto. He went to Red Bull Salzburg in Austria. In, uh, Austria. Uh, yes, Austria. From there, I now took him to Villarreal where he is today. Okay. All right. So apart from uh, Chukweze, can you tell me about two other pl players that you are involved in their transfers? From Nigeria. He did to work at all, so I transferred to Arsenal. Okay. It was in the same, in the same year with Chukwese. We were in the same team that I took to Portugal. Uh, Jack in Palibor, that is from Rivers, he, he plays in uh, Norway. Okay. He, plays for he was playing, he was in Villarreal before Chukwese came. Okay. He was in Villarreal, yes, I put him in Villarreal before Chukwese came. Okay. But he didn't make so much impact. So much impact. So he was transferred to Norway, where he is now playing. Okay. Yes. So, uh, and those of us, we have another player, uh, Stan Nicaro, that's playing in Maritimo in Portugal. Okay. Yes. And um, we have some players also in Ukraine, but because of the war now, some of Absolutely. Them, yeah, some of them are in Germany, some in Holland, some in Hungary. We are, we are now trying to fix them okay. up in clubs. Yeah, they were playing already okay. before this war started. Okay. We have so many players in Portugal that are playing uh, Portugal. There's another one, Jimmy uh, Pyatt. Okay. Jimmy Pyatt, we transferred him to FC Porto. He was in FC Porto. Okay. He played there, went to different teams. Yeah. Uh, he played in... Uh, this team is a very strong, very big team. And so that is okay. quite, quite a lot of players outside. All right. So um, another thing I want to ask, I want to ask this person, why um, I've noticed most people, managers, agents, uh, people that deal with players, you know, they find it difficult to have anything to do with female players female player so i'm just uh, i'm just asking are you in any way involved in transferring of female players no i've, I've not gotten involved in the female players because why is difficult because you know in this our climb female football is not that great okay yeah and um, i don't know about uh, the jeans and scouts that come here to pick female footballers. Hmm. But it's something that we're looking at in the coming years. Uh, of course, we can talk about it. Okay. How many, how many girls are playing football in Nigeria? Um, pretty, pretty minute. It's not minute. We have, for instance, the NWFL. They have yes, 14 yeah. of 16 teams. Please. Does it, out of the uh, population of how many? In the NWFL, we have 20 teams. So if or 18 teams. So if you my my nose, I mean if you have 14 for women, I don't think it's too bad. I didn't say it's bad because how many women do you have in Nigeria compared their population? If people have uh if people play football, the number of the population of women in Nigeria is not but the boys, the, the boys I understand everybody is playing football, so it's mm. a lot of business for us. Okay. You know? So that's what we are looking at. You can have a female team. Now we still no agent will call you for one day. Wow. Do you have any anything? Yes, of course. How many Nigerians are playing professional football? How many Nigerian ladies are playing professional football? How many? Uh, so why are you going to invest in a 
something that you know will not return your money on time. Return on investment is very important. But I still believe that, just like you said, in the in coming years, it's something that you would want to invest Definitely, in. Definitely, we are coming. We are coming in the next two, three years, I'm sure. Yeah, because what I'm looking at is that, just like you said, we don't have a lot of female or women football players. But for instance, if there's just a particular person that handles anything that has to do with female, you know, in the country, I think he's going to be viable. That's what I think. Not because I'm a woman, but I just feel that... We are, we are coming, don't worry. Okay. To get into it. Okay. All right.